Deval Patrick made a visit on the day of the fires, a governor of Massachusetts who's been a multi-time guest on this program. And he is in a situation where he is running for re-election in 2010. And to me, it was incredible to read, and not, not a, a majority of the commentary, but some commentary saying if this wasn't an election year, he wouldn't get out of bed with his five o'clock or look more like 10 o'clock shadow and come to, Matt, come to, to this part of the state uh, if, for a fire. If there was, what's your reaction well, it, to that? It's a little hard to say. He did get a nice photo op. You know, he, he was dressed like a Western Massachusetts person. He was wearing a parka and boots and jeans and a plaid shirt. Is and, that how people dress here? Well, I don't know. He showed up <laughs> at the police station like every man. But I, I do want to say one thing. Yeah. If, if we're looking at, a, at an election season, there's an interesting backstory developing here. And, there's a, and that is that there's a district attorney's race next year in That's 2010. Right. And Michael Kalane, who is in charge of this investigation, will be running against David Sullivan, who's the Register of Probate. Now, these are two guys who are both very, very popular. Uh, Michael Kalane, as the assistant district attorney, of course, has a lot of prosecutorial experience. But let me tell you, if he cracks this case, that'll be a feather in his cap. Well, this, so from, this is interesting. We I know both Dave and Mike, and you're right, they're both incredibly likable. Everybody likes all, both of them, and I, I think it's going to be interesting how that shapes out. But without talking about Northampton inside baseball for the majority of our audience, is this a case that for a young assistant district attorney like Mike could put him on the national scale if he solves a serial arsonist that made front page news? Is it that type of thing? I believe that it could. It, you think it could be? Sure. And how, how might that play out? I mean, uh, let's... Uh, Tell me, how, how might it play out? Well, it's putting Northampton on the map. Well, Northampton's already on the map. It's one of the most livable cities in the nation. You know, it's one of the best arts towns, one of the best 10 arts towns in the, in the country. I mean, mm. Northampton is on the map nationally. Uh, so this, this, could, this could really help Michael Kaylane's career. What's your prediction based on, while well, we're being told that under the radar, some of the previous arsons were solved, but they led to people who just aren't around anymore. We don't have the names. Right. What's your prediction about where this could go? I mean, arson is inherently very difficult, a difficult type of crime to solve. And is that mostly because you're burning the evidence? That's, that's what that's, it is? It's that's a fire? what we've been told, that arson is very difficult to solve, largely because the evidence is destroyed mm -hmm. within the act of the crime. How likely is it that there may be eventually somebody going to jail for this? It's hard to say. That's a question that I did ask Deval Patrick during the press conference, and I didn't get a straight answer. I said, I asked what percentage of arsons are solved, and I was given merely an assurance that this this particular crime will be solved. Nobody really answered that question. After the, have you found out what percentage of arsons are solved? No, I haven't. I mean, what would be what would be a an expected number? I mean, is one out of even one out of four to me seems like it would be high, given the fact that you, it's it's just very easy to disappear. the The evidence disappears. The person disappears. Well, word on the street is that the police are very close to cracking this case. Is that right? Yeah, that's the, those are the rumors I've heard. But I don't know what street are, you live on. I don't, I don't, in this town. Somehow I don't hear any rumors. It's incredible. I don't. I don't know. I mean, when we were covering the local mayoral election, mm -hmm. it, the 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 election was over ten minutes prior, and I was still asking the mayor what she thinks her chances are. It, I, for some reason, I seem to be the last to hear about everything. <laughs> but you were covering the election live. <laughs> we were right, and I didn't. I didn't That's even true. know. We did that together, didn't we? It's incredible. <laughs> I just didn't know. Well, this. It's. I think it's great what you're doing on Northampton Media. I hear you're rushing around. Uh, from day to night, is that right? Yes, I'm busy all the time. This uh, this particular incident has really kept us very, very busy. And one thing I'm doing on Northampton Media, not only providing original reporting, but I'm curating links. I'm, I'm directing readers to all of the good reporting that's being done on the topic, whether it's being done by newspaper reporters, uh, television stations, uh, radio producers. So so I want to create a one-stop shopping for uh, for people who are interested. in. Now, what about news, all yeah. the bad reporting that, that's being done on the fire as well? Because there's plenty of that, too. Well, sure. Right. No, we, we try to... Um, tactfully uh, <laughs> avoid that <laughs> yes right yeah. okay mary serez from northamptonmedia.com we'll be back and we will talk about the top lies of 2009 and plenty more you're listening to midweek politics and we will be back after this